Welcome to the Cross Border Interview Signature Series. From musicians to painters, from novelists to filmmakers, we're bringing you a diverse range of voices and perspectives, all united by their passions for their craft. And whether you're a longtime fan or a newcomer to their work, we're confident that you'll find something to inspire and captivate you in each and every one of these interviews. So join us as we journey across borders and cultures discovering new and exciting talents and celebrating the power of art and entertainment which brings people together. Today we welcome Canadian country music star Megan Page who has had her music earn a spot on the top 100 of 2022 on the Canadian Indie Country Countdown. Her third single, No Coming Back From You, comes on the heels of her first two songs, Best I Never Had and Told Me You Love Me. Megan, Welcome back to the show, Long Time No See. Having me back, I'm super excited. <laughs> um, so before we get started, I want to take a moment and say this to you. Um, for those who don't know, uh, Megan and her, I, I would say her manager, but her mom as well, drove down two and a half hours from her house to the Calgary Brain Tumor Foundation on June 10th and did it all for help fundraising and she was a blessing in disguise because she played for not only the 45 minutes that i asked her to but for almost an hour it seemed like going on and off so i want to thank you from the bottom of my heart megan for taking time out of your day and performing to the crowd and the attendees who were at the Calgary Brain Tumor Foundation walk on June 10th this year. So thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. It was so much fun. Thank you for having me. And for those who also don't know, this is the second time Megan's been on the show as well. Uh, she had to remind me because my mind was a little flustered that day. But at the CCMAs here in Calgary, Alberta, she was part of our live show. So this is her second appearance on the Cross Border Interviews. So I don't need to start with the question that I usually start off with because you've already answered it in that first time that you were on. But I want to know, how has life been since the CCMAs when we first chatted earlier this year? Life has been really good, super busy, so that's good. Can't complain about that. <laughs> well, so what have you been doing? Because I know that the third single, the the well, the single that's been out, No Coming Back From You, is on Spotify. It's out for a release that people can download, purchase. But what else have you been getting up to? Yeah, absolutely. So over the winter, I took time to just kind of practice and hone in on my craft. Um, we were also doing some more recordings for you guys that you'll get to hear later. <laughs> when is later? Because I'm one of those people that will look on websites when someone tells me that they're coming spring of 2023. I was expecting some music for 2023. Can we expect some new music coming out here soon? Absolutely. We're releasing my next one in about a month or so, hopefully. So that's, that's so over the summer, we're going to possibly be hearing new music from Megan Page. Definitely this summer. Yes. So what can you tell me about the new music that's coming out? Is it in the same venue as the three uh, singles that you've already released? Or is it some of a new uh, tune, new, uh, jo not genre, because I'm assuming you're still in country, but is it something different than you've released already? Or is it in the same vein? I'd say it's in the same wheelhouse, um, but definitely a little bit more different. Um, these ones took us a little bit longer to finish up just because we wanted them to be perfect, but I think they're perfect and ready to go now. So let's talk about the writing, uh, the writing style and the writing uh, abilities of you, because I, I, I've been going through your back catalog, the your three songs that I've been able to find, and you, you tell stories when you write, it sounds like, and I want to know, how is it to put pen to paper for you to to come up with these songs that touch people in in a way that they do because when i when i when you left and i was talking to some of the people at the uh found uh, the tu brain tumor walk they were really excited to hear from you when they wanted to know more information so my husband who had taken your card was passing out the card and getting people to take photos so for you what is it like to sit down and write a song like no coming back from you yeah well hearing that makes me incredibly happy um <laughs> unfortunately I can't take credit for writing all of my songs. I do have incredible 
uh, writers on my songs. I have written two of them though. And the way it kind of comes to be is I'm usually having a conversation with someone or I'm driving down the road and something just comes to me or someone says a really good one-liner and I'm like, I need to write that down and put it in a song. And I guess that's usually how it comes about. Are you critical of yourself when you do put those words to paper and you start looking at it or does it come naturally to you? Because it sounds like, and listening to the music that you've put out and even listening to you at the con at the foundation walk, it seems like it just comes like second nature to you, like breathing and drinking water. Music just comes naturally to you. The music portion of it does. Um, the writing portion, I definitely had to learn and work on. Um, so I can be a little bit critical of myself on the writing side of things. Well, on all sides of things, but I feel like that is just being a human being sometimes. And what brings you what brings you the most joy? Is it the the writing the actual melody of the song? I think it's definitely connecting with people, whether that be through my songs, through other songs. Um, but live gigs, I love just connecting with people. And yeah, that's my favorite part. And have you been doing much of that lately? I have, yes. This summer's been really busy for live performances um, and lots more to come. So so do you have, well, what's, what's on the radar then? So let's talk about what upcoming shows you have, because this will be coming out on June 30th. So literally the start of most people's summers. So what can, where can people potentially see you over the next few months? Yeah, so on July 1st, Canada Day, I'm playing at the Garrison Golf Club for about an hour or so. Um, Where is that? That's in Edmonton. So that's okay. my Edmonton folks. If you're around here, come check it out. It's going to be a lot of fun. Um, I'm also playing at Pigeon Lake Music Festival this year, which I'm really excited about. Congratulations. That's a big festival. <laughs> <laughs> I'm super stoked. It's going to be fun. So you're playing at the Pigeon Festival. That's a big sort of daunting task there because that is a big popular festival here in the province of Alberta. Um, are you excited to actually get up on stage? Because the last few years have kind of been difficult for people in your industry and especially in the music industry. So being able to play in a small venue or even a large venue like the Pigeon Festival, it's got to get your like blood boiling and kind of exciting. Yes, I'm really excited. I'm also a little bit nervous. I'm kicking off the whole weekend. Um, yeah, this is probably one of the <laughs> biggest festivals I've done so far in my career. But it's going to be super fun, and I'm definitely looking forward to it. Now, what do you expect to be playing there? Are we, are we, could we expect to hear some of the new songs? <laughs> Mix of some covers and some originals, and I will definitely have my new song in there. New songs in there. Perfection. Where can people find you? Because I can imagine that as a musician, you want to try and get out there and get it in front of as many people as possible. But where can people find you? Where can people learn about your music? Where can people buy your music, support you in your endeavors of becoming the next amazing Alberta country music star based in uh, Millet, if I'm not mistaken? <laughs> yeah, well, you can find me almost anywhere. You can follow me on my Instagram at Megan Page Music. If you look that up, you should find me. Um, and my website has all of my links and Spotify, Apple Music, all that fun stuff. And that's just MeganPageMusic.com. I'm going to ask you a very weird question, but I, I feel like you're <laughs> I feel like you're up for it. Megan, I feel like you're I feel like we're friends now. We, we've met each other three times. Come on. We're friends now. Music is going through a very big change right now with the rise of AI, with the rise of artificial intelligence, as someone who is relatively an up and coming star in the music industry in Canada itself, what's your thoughts on what's going on in the music industry today? And I know you'd pro you probably did not prepare for this question and I feel like I'm throwing this question a weird way, but I've been asking a lot of people about the rise of AI and as someone who is in the industry, who is seeing sort of the 
inundation of artificial music going out. What's your thoughts on that? That's a great question, actually. Um, I'm honestly not too worried about it just because a robot can't feel anything. <laughs> and so I feel like a person can definitely write better from the heart for people to feel it than a robot could. Is that where <laughs> your music comes from? Is that where your music absolutely. comes from at the end of the day is the heart? Yeah, absolutely. I always write about a situation I've been through, I'm going through. It's always from the heart. And what does that mean to you? What does writing from the heart mean? Because that could mean a lot of different things because it takes a lot to put your emotions down and be vulnerable, especially in today's world where being vulnerable is a sign of weakness for some. Um, for you, when you're writing, whether it be the lyrics or the melody, and you're writing it from the heart, you, you talked about how critical you are, but is it even more critical when you finally hit that publish button and you put it out in the world and you hope to not be inundated by the people who are a-holes, pardon my French, but people, hopefully you find that, uh, a group of people who will connect with your music like I have. I actually feel like everybody's vulnerability is our power and I don't think it should be a sign of weakness. That's how we connect to people. That's how we... I don't know. That's just how we live. Vulnerability shouldn't be a sign of weakness. And I'm glad that I can show people that and share that with people. And hopefully they can do the same thing and put their heart out on the line. It's scary, but it can be worth it. Because the reason I ask that is because the song No Coming Back From You, it, it kind of feels like you're putting your heart on the line there. And I'm not sure if it's life imitating art there or if you have a story behind how the, the song came about. But can you talk me through about that song in particular? Because that is your newest, the, 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 the latest single that you have released. And I want to know. There is an emotion in that song that when I was listening to it, you could tell that the, there's a story behind the story of this song. And I want to know from you, Megan, right here, right now, what's the story behind the story here? Yeah, absolutely. So, like I said, this one, I unfortunately didn't write, but I did have some incredible writers on it. While um, you didn't write it, you yes. make it your own. You, yes. you sing this song like I'm going, okay. Because you, you, people can write a song for you, but at the end of the day, you have to decide if you're going to sing it or not, because you have to feel a connection to that song. So what was the connection to that song for the story to be so, so emotional for you? Yeah, so I feel like everybody has been through a situation like this where you've just been so in love with someone that you could not even imagine being with somebody else or even thinking about someone else. Um, I've definitely been through this and when I was shown this song I was actually going through this oh, um, oh yeah <laughs> you when you when you released it did you have people talk to you about their experiences of going through that uh, breakup and the heartbreak that comes along with leaving someone or someone leaving you I did actually I've had I've been grateful enough to have lots of conversations with people about how my music has affected them or made them think about other things. And it's just so exciting to me that I can do that to someone. It's kind of crazy, but yeah, I've definitely had lots of amazing conversations with people about it and I love hearing everybody's stories. So if you have a story, please reach out and I'd love to hear it. And she gets back to you too. I apologize. I'm not, I'm not trying to do Bogart the conversation, but you are one of the musicians that will actually get back to people because I'll send you a message and you'll go, sure. Okay. It's like, what, who, who is this random person that is coming on my show? Okay. Good for her. But why is it so important for you as a musician to connect to your fans, to stay in contact with your fans and the people who want to listen to your music? Yeah. Well, that's why I actually got into music is because I love, I love connecting with people and I love hearing people's stories and how they got to where they are now. And, I love sharing my story with people and telling them, I guess, that they're not alone. It's nice to feel like you're not alone in this crazy life that we're living. And that's why I love just staying connected with all my people. And you do it so well. Is it is it 
a ch- is it a task for you or is it something that you enjoy to do, enjoy doing when people reach out to you and you take that time even if it's five minutes ten minutes and re- respond to them because uh, I know some people it can be inundating with all the information that they get from people but for you it seems like you kind of enjoy it I really do I really do enjoy it like I said I love hearing everybody's stories and I love hearing that maybe my music has influenced them to do something or made them feel better in a time where they didn't feel so great. And yeah, I just love connecting with people. It's my favorite. Who's that for you? Who's your inspiration? Because when you, when people reach out to you and they, you respond back to them, I'm assuming you went through a phase where you reached out to musicians as well and said, uh, I love what you're doing. I, I, I connect with your music. So who was your inspiration to get, be, get to where you are today? Talking on this amazing internationally renowned podcast, the cross border interviews. Um, I actually have a, I guess a musical one could be, Adele. Um, I love how she really shows her emotions while she is singing and writing and she really puts her heart out on the line. That's always what I've wanted to do. Um, So that would be a musical inspiration. Um, Non-musical inspiration would be my mom. She is my biggest inspiration and she is the one who just pushes me to keep going even when I don't think I can. And then another one would be Travis Switzer, my wonderful producer. He has pushed me harder than anyone I know. And I wouldn't be where I am today without him. So you have a very busy summer coming up here. You have festivals. You have shows that you're going to be doing. You have music that's going to be coming out. What are you going to be doing to to sort of relax? Or is this relaxful for you, producing, putting on shows, going to these concerts? Because I can imagine there's days where you just want to be Megan. But for you, it sounds like Megan Page is just being Megan. (laughs) That's definitely true. I feel like Megan and Megan Page are definitely the same person. Um, I actually feel kind of sad when I don't have any gigs or nothing to do. It's very... Oh, what's the word? I don't know. It's very sad, though. Um, I love, love, love playing for people and meeting people and doing interviews all the time and and traveling. And I just love it. It's my favorite. So usually over the winter, I'm just practicing my little butt off and trying to get better for the summer. So, yeah. And I highly recommend it. For anyone who's listening to this, any podcast or any interview, any news agency that's listening to this show right now, reach out to Megan. And I and I mean this with all sincerity, Megan, because I, I, I consider you a friend now and I consider you someone that needs to be promoted as much as possible because your music is fantastic. And the fact that you took time out of your busy uh, week and you drove two and a half hours from Edmonton to Calgary to play at six o'clock in the morning or at eight o'clock in the morning for the uh, Brain Tumor Foundation walk in Calgary shows me that you're sincere in your music and there's not a lot of people who i can say that about so megan from the bottom of my heart i will promote you i will champion you i will be your biggest fan in the and in the podcast world and if there's ever a moment where you need to come on and talk about a song i'll be there for you and if there's ever a time where you need someone to help set up a show here in Calgary, I will be there for you because I think there's m- not enough people out there right now like you who is willing to take time out of a busy schedule. And I, I'm on my soapbox right now, people, and I apologize for this immensely, but go listen to her music. Go support her. Go download her music. Go get tickets to her concerts. Go get tickets to her shows. Go to the Pigeon Festival in Alberta later on this year, go and see her because she is a fantastic person, musician. And from what we heard at the concert, uh, the brain tumor walk on June 10th in Calgary, you have started a great conversation here and people want to know more about you. So the cross border interviews, and I'm not sure if I should say this on the record or off the record right now, but later on, hopefully if our schedules can work out, 
We're going to be putting on a performance of Megan Page down here. Tickets will hopefully be going on sale. And we're going to make sure people know who you are because you have done so much for me, Megan. It's time for me to give back. And I'm going to do a lot to make sure that your name is on the country music map here in Calgary. So thank you so much. Thank you so much. That means the absolute world to me. So with that, Megan, um, your links to your website, to your Facebook page, all your sh all Spotify, Apple Music, wherever your YouTube channels will be in the show notes. So as I've said, if you haven't already, go out and support Megan today because you will not be sorry. You will not be upset that by this recommendation. She is an up and coming star. She's going to make it big in country music. So thank you, Megan, for being part of the show again. Thank you so much for having me. This is so much fun. So with that, I want to remind everyone, put down your phone and go have a conversation with somebody, even if it's for just five minutes. Till then, just keep talking. <laughs>